Rub up your engines! Well, here's something the lovers of electric cars certainly have not been talking about, but it turns out that if everybody goes, a lot of people go into electric vehicles, there could be a surge of car crash deaths. And you might think, why? This is a two-edged sword here. The people inside the electric cars are actually safer because electric cars are inherently heavy. Those batteries weigh a ton. In the case of some of them, they're almost a ton. Some of these things are 1,500 pound batteries. They're almost 2,000 pounds. They're heavy vehicles. You got a heavy vehicle, there's all that mass. So you get in a big wreck, that mass crunches into the other one. The people inside the electric car will be safer because they're in the big mass, but the people they hit, bigger mass is smacking into them. They don't talk about that, right? Now, if you want the actual facts, it turns out that there is a surge in US deaths on a highway that is exactly comparable to the increasing weight of cars. Everybody loves these big SUVs. Guess what? They weigh a whole bunch. More people are gonna be killed if they get hit by one. It's gonna take a while to do any kind of in-depth study because at the end of this year, there's only gonna be 18 new battery-powered SUVs and pickup trucks in the United States. So there aren't that many different ones out there. So it's gonna take a while to actually find out what happens. The guy that wrote the article about the mass, he didn't even get into something else that I'll tell you will probably contribute to more deaths bigger than the mass of the vehicle itself and that is the acceleration of electric cars. They are insanely fast. You hit that pedal and you floor it, electric motors have instant torque, so they have acceleration instantly. A gasoline engine, to reach maximum horsepower and torque, you gotta rev them up, get them spinning real fast, so it's not instant. These things are instant, and with the insane horsepower that they're putting in some, and the torque being instantaneous, People are gonna get in a wreck because they're gonna go too fast and smash into things because they take off too fast. I've driven them, <laughs> and this guy didn't even take that in consideration. The speed of these things, they'll be in more wrecks because they are just faster cars. I mean, some of those things will go zero to 60 in two seconds. That is insanely fast. So guess what? They're gonna run into poles. There probably will be more deaths from them. And of course, they don't talk about that. You know? Oh no, that's the future. It's safer. No, it isn't. <laughs> Especially if you got big old batteries in them that are rolling down the road, low center of gravity, they'll plow right through everything. Norega says, I have a 2010 Mazda Primacy and it burns oil. Why? Change your PCV valve. Pray it's that. It's $10 part. Could be sucking oil in to the PCV system. No, if it's not that, it means the engine's worn. Either the seals are bad in the intake and it sucks oil in, or the piston rings are worn and then oil blows by because they're not sealing inside the block anymore. It is a Mazda. Their piston rings aren't back in 2010. They're cheaper made. They're better today, but back then a lot of them turned into oil burners. It's too late now, but you buy any car, change the oil regularly. If you change your oil every 5,000 miles to full synthetic oil, generally you're not going to have an oil burner. Change it sooner than later and they won't burn oil and they won't break down and cost a fortune to fix. Savannah the Pink Queen says, Scotty, what are your thoughts on Rolls Royce? Well, I could be here for hours explaining it to you, the history, but as it stands today, a while back BMW bought Rolls Royce. And even before that, Rolls Royce were using V12 BMW engines. They didn't make their own engines. They were buying it from BMW. Now they're just a glorified BMW. Now, they're also money pits. They cost a fortune to fix. The parts cost, like a brake rotor, might be $900 instead of $90. They're outrageously expensive. Now, at one point in time, all the rich one, I might drive my Rolls Royce, right? Now, I, the rappers want Bentleys. They're more expensive. The Rolls Royce are like passe. So you'd be a passe rapper if you showed up in a Rolls. <laughs> The interesting thing is they make killer plane engines. Most of the planes you ride, you see those the engines, the jets will say Rolls Royce. They make great plane engines, but the plane and car company split apart a long time ago. The car company, the plane company, yeah, it's a good aerospace company, but the cars, just rich men's toys, and now they're basically BMWs anyways. Jay Cortez said, Scotty, I got a 96 Jeep Grand Cherokee Laredo, 380,000 miles, still on my original engine and tranny. It runs great. What do you think? I think that you must really take care of it and baby it. I have had customers get that kind of mileage, but they were the ultimate in maintaining. They changed the oil every 5,000 miles with synthetic oil, or if they use normal oil, they changed it every 3,000 miles. They didn't beat them up. Now, if you drove like a lunatic, you'll burn the transmissions out. The engine 
engine stronger than the tranny. But like I say, I've had customers with them, especially ones that did a lot of highway driving. I had a customer who had one who used it to deliver dogs. He raised dogs, hunting dogs. And he was in Texas. And he didn't give a crap. Somebody called him in Michigan and wanted a dog. He'd get in. He'd drive to Michigan and back delivering the dog. So it was all highway driving, which is equivalent to about 10% of city driving. And that's how he got some. He had 400 something on his. The older ones, though, that's a 96. They were better made. The newer ones, Fiat took over. Now it's Stellantis, Peugeot, Fiat, Chrysler all together, the three stooges of car manufacturing. I wouldn't wish one on my worst enemy today, the modern ones. Zach M said, Scott, I just got my transmission rebuilt and I noticed when I put it in drive or reverse, it doesn't go on its own without me giving it gas. Is that normal? Of course it's not normal. The idiots didn't rebuild it, right? <laughs> Realize one thing. I did a little research the other day. Turns out in the United States that one third, 33% of the automatic transmissions that are rebuilt in automatic transmission shops in the United States are not rebuilt correctly the first time and they got to be done two or three times over before they work right. The guy didn't build it right. If you got to put it in drive and reverse you have to give it gas to make it go. They didn't do a good job. The oil pump inside the transmission is supposed to just idling have enough pressure to make it go. If you got to step on the gas it has to spin faster so either they didn't replace it or they didn't seal it right. They screwed up take it back to them. I'm sure you paid good money. Take it back. They didn't do the job correctly. Neil Mancy says, Scotty, I got a 2014 Honda Civic. 120,000 miles. When accelerate 10 to 25, the whole car wobbles. Well, you got to figure out why it's wobbly. Jack the car up in the air. Watch my video, how to check your car suspension system. Pull on the tires like that and then like this. If they go like this and they clunk, 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 you probably need a tie rod. If they go like this and clunk, look at the tires, spin them. If they're out of round, that'll make the whole car wobble too. You want to pray it's something simpler like that because sometimes, especially in Hondas, if it's an automatic transmission and you accelerate from that, 10 to 25 and it starts wobbling and it stops, it can be the transmission, the early gears going out and they wobble when you accelerate but then when you stop, also check the drive shafts. If the shafts are worn and the CV joints are worn when you accelerate, it can wobble then too and they can easily be checked out. You want to pray, it's not the transmission, maybe just the drive shaft. You can get brand new aftermarket drive shafts for a Civic for like 69 bucks a piece. They're not that expensive but the transmissions cost thousands. FRM says, Scotty, my grandpa lives in Tennessee and I'm he has an early 2000 Ford Ranger. When he goes uphill, the engine whines very loud and goes up to red line. Any thoughts? If you actually hear the engine whining and it goes to the red line, either the clutch is slipping or if he's leaving it in lower gear longer, the transmission is whining. I doubt if it's the engine whining because going to red line is either the clutch is slipping or he's leaving it in there with a standard transmission. Now, if it was an automatic transmission, yeah, it would definitely be the transmission then because it would be staying in the gear too long and it wasn't shifting to the next gear, but he's doing it manually. So, Either the clutch is slipping or he's just revving it up too high and he's getting it so high that it'll start whining because it's going too fast. Would you fill your car's tank with refined scotch whiskey byproducts? Are you worried your car will get drunk? Well, it's the byproducts, not the whiskey itself. The whiskey's too expensive. Celtic Renewables in Scotland is creating fuel from the leftover stuff for making scotch whiskey. Now back in 2017, this company created fuel that could put in a normal car. It didn't have to be modified to use it. In October 2021, the same company created its first plant to do mass production and they plan on making five more. Now the stuff is called biobutanol. It's relatively similar to gasoline and it's actually more similar to gasoline than ethanol is. So it works better than ethanol. Now nobody's ever certified that you can run this biobutanol direct, it's mixed just like ethanol, you know, E85, 85% ethanol, 15% gasoline, most of the gasoline in the United States is 90% gasoline, 10% ethanol, although with this Biden thing, it's going to be 85% gasoline and 15% ethanol. Now, in a similar move, Glenn Fittich, the expensive Scotch distillery, they make their vehicles to run on biogas, the process of bacteria breaking it down, not gasoline, actual gas, like natural gas, it created them themselves from some of their waste products. And here's the thing, this is a joke of everything. Biobutanol, it puts out as much carbon dioxide as regular gasoline burning it, but they say it's eco because, to me the whole thing is kind of ridiculous, the reduction of greenhouse gases is because the barley grown to produce the whiskey, of course, barley comes from a plant and the plant uses carbon dioxide and gives off oxygen. So they're looking at the whole cycle and saying, well, you burn it and it pollutes, but we're growing all this rye and the plants are getting rid of carbon dioxide. So 
<laughs> round and around and around they go. Who knows what circular arguments are going to come up next? Who knows? Maybe it'll be a partial solution to stuff. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.